Where do I get started? How do I begin? I would like to practice the Western esoteric traditions, but there's so much material out there, I'm a little overwhelmed. That's what we're going to talk about today. This is Keith Joseph. I am a aspirant in the Institute for Hermetic Studies Teacher Certification Program. Today, we're going to be talking about a teachable course from uh, Mark Stavish, Advice to the Solo Practitioner. And that course elaborates and uh, develops ideas that were presented by Israel Rigardi in the One Year Manual. And today, that's what I'm going to talk about, the One Year Manual. It is a series of practices and um, skills that you develop over the course of a year, one per month. And the reason that this book, I think, is so important, even if you have experience in the, uh, you know, practicing meditation or ritual work, an expert, a master is someone who is, has mastery of the basics, of the fundamentals. So, for example, if you are going to be a great basketball player, you see a great basketball player, what are they great at? They're great at the basics, at the fundamentals, dribbling, shooting, passing. These are the things that you learn on the very first day or the very first week of practice. These are the things that you're first introduced to. And as a master, you're just very good at those basic things. And this book um, gives you a lot of the basic practices, the basic skills that you'll need to master to become an adept, become a master of the, of the mysteries. So the beginning practices are things like body awareness and relaxation. Relaxation is a, is a skill, the ability to relax your body and maybe even your mind is a skill that you'll need throughout your career as an occultist. And, you know, Mark has said this before that, you know, nirvana is just a state of relaxation. And so you start to see, right, that this beginning practice, this, in, this initial practice is something that you'll master. And as you master it, you will um, just be traveling along the path. This is something that you'll need to have a greater and greater skill at, just relaxation your ability to accomplish all sorts of things, other meditations, other visualizations will be dependent on your ability to relax. Uh, ritual work, all these things, relaxation a fundamental skill. Similarly, um, he has you um, practice uh, the fourfold breath, breathing practice, breath control. Again, a crucial practice, The this one, uh, is a very common one, the fourfold breath where you are inhaling for a count of four, holding that uh, breath for a count of four, exhaling for a count of four, and pausing for a, a four count until you take the next breath. And the main thing is that it's a rhythm. It could be a three count, even a two count. However, it's just that it, it has a box pattern. It's a rhythm. But the ability to uh, control your breath, to bring your breath under conscious awareness, right? Your breath, breathing is part of the um, automatic uh, nervous system and the ability to consciously manipulate that is a human thing. That's a human skill. That's a skill that other animals do not uh, have. And it's part of what makes us human. It is part of our uh, divinity. So this is the this is a beginning practice, and once you start to uh, are able to manipulate your breath, you'll be able to do it in all sorts of other ways. Breath control is really foundational. Um, if you practice uh, martial art, any kind of um, combat sport, even a non combat sport, any sport, start to realize that the ability to um, calm your breathing, to control your breathing allows you to um, enhance your endurance. It allows you to think more clearly. Um, it's really a fundamental practice. My hypothesis is that um, 
it was developed by the warrior cast, right? The breath control and these breathing practices, because if you engage in any kind of fighting practice, you immediately realize that you have to be able to control your breathing. And again, this is a fundamental practice, a basic practice that you will develop and, and learn more about um, as you develop and as you, as you advance along the path. He also has you practice what he calls mental awareness, which today we call mindfulness. And again, the ability to observe the, the way that your mind works, the way that your thinking works, the way that your emotions work, and not just to engage and identify with your thinking and emotions and moods, but to step back, to take that witness position. This is, again, fundamental, crucial skill, not just for, well, for life, not just for, you know, particular practices, but for everyday life, the ability to step back and take that observer position towards your own mind is what allows you to kind of transcend that limited self, that limited ego. So again, it's a basic practice. It's a basic skill, but it has, um, as you master it, it, it's really part and parcel of illumination of having an enlightened mind. Um, he has you develop concentration. You're going to develop concentration um, just as you kind of scan your body and learn to relax it. As you observe your mind, you have to kind of have concentration to stay in that observer position. But he has you practice concentration with the mantra. Concentration, again, crucial practice. The ability to concentrate is the ability to ignore distraction. And at this point in the um, you know early 21st century or mid uh, early to mid 21st century, distraction is enormous. The ability to ignore distraction will um, just be a huge advantage for you in your life and it is foundational for other practices as well you have to be able to concentrate you can't engage in uh any kind of serious meditation or ritual if you can't visualization practice uh if you can't concentrate so you have to be able to concentrate and one of the other cool things about it is that there's an inherent pleasure in concentration i sometimes think about it as just a grace uh, if you sometimes we'll call beginner's luck, but if you start to get into just very kind of basic states of concentration, uh, it feels great. And again, you can get deeper and deeper levels of absorption. And those are really interesting states, right? Um, the Buddha had identified eight, eight states of absorption, eight jhanas. So you can really get um, deeply concentrated and uh, it is a pleasurable kind of practice it's one of the um, consolations of the spiritual practice uh, of spiritual life um the next then he has to develop your will again crucial the ability to um develop willpower he has um i think crowley had this idea of Cutting yourself every time, you know, making some sort of pledge. I'm not going to use the word and, or I'm not going to use the word the, or I'm going to, you know, whatever, you know, you're going to make some sort of, um, he in encourages you to do it as a mundane thing, you know, as not using the word the or and or something, because he doesn't want it to be a moral thing. It's just an exertion of your will. And then you punish yourself. Crowley had, was so extreme that he was using a razor, um, Regardi recommends a, an electric shock that you get like a novelty shop or something. I don't know if all that's, I mean, maybe, I, I maybe that's more hardcore. I, I've been able to discipline myself without those extremes. Uh, I made a pledge. It was years ago to stop using the Lord's name in vain. Wasn't that difficult. Um, I just stopped doing it. And I, I didn't have to punish myself. I was able to stop. And now I, I it's just not part of my response. 
simple thing. Um, but developing your will is a, is a useful thing. And then once the next series of practices are rituals, like the middle pillar, uh, like the rose cross, and then developing into um, prayer and, and practicing the presence of God, all these things are really fundamental practices. Uh, the middle pillar, for example, you know, Mark has written about the middle pillar as a way of developing the, the inner fire. So you, you can use that ritual and develop it uh, or even use it as the basis for beginning other practices. Um, you can use it with the assumption of the God form. So that practice, again, it's kind of a basic fundamental thing, but you can use it um, throughout your career, throughout your, your time as a practitioner and increasingly more and more sophisticated ways. Um, like, like, passing behind your back right you have to be able to pass the ball first before you can pass it behind your back as a basketball player similar idea i hope all that is helpful i am going to do a follow-up video on the um one uh the question and answers the first year question and answers which is also available on teachable and i think that's a really good complement to uh this text and the advice to the solo practitioner that first year questions and answers there's a lot of work that helps you balance your psyche your your mind um, meditations on the elements um, kind of stuff that's derived from psychosynthesis where you're thinking about different aspects of your personality and how to integrate them um, that's all uh, fundamental stuff that that really makes um that you really need to, to start to work on early on. I hope this video is helpful and interesting to you. Please, if you've uh, worked on any of these practices, worked with Regardi's one-year manual, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions, disagree with what I've said. Love to engage with you in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.